This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Nihongo Hanashimaska. Nihongo Hanashimasen. As activists begin to gather at Epping Town Hall, Epping Selectmen meet behind closed doors. It's 6.24, 45 minutes at least before the Jardist hearing, public hearing, is supposed to begin. The closed door session is said to be unrelated to the Jardist case, that they had uh, apparently scheduled it to discuss something else. The background story is that there's a police officer here in Epping who's possibly uh, facing termination or suspension for uh, his opposition to the drug war. So his supporters are already gathering to uh, suggest that he not be fired. I believe what they call it is a termination of employment hearing. Are you on the board of selectmen, sir? No, sir. Are you with Epping PD? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Are you on the board of selectmen, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about the allegations that Officer Jardis was harassed for his beliefs about the war on drugs? I think we really need to wait and do this in a public hearing, if that's okay with you. Do you have any concerns at all? Well, of course I have concerns because we have personalities involved and we want to make sure that they get their due process. All right, thanks so much, ma'am. What's your okay. name if I ask? Diane Gilbert. Okay, Ms. Gilbert, thank you. Hello, the man himself, Brad Jardis, the man at the center of the storm. Good to see you. Do you have any thoughts going into the hearing? Um, I'm fairly certain that um, the board tonight is probably going to go with the chief's recommendation, although I don't think it's either just or legal. Um, the, um, the boards typically follow their heads, um, and I believe where justice will be done will be in the appeals process. I see. Okay. Anything else to add? No, sir. All right. We'll see what happens. Are you on the board of selectmen, sir? I'm not. Okay, thank no. you. Hey, Are you on the board of selectmen, sir? Yes, I am. Do you have any concerns about the allegations that Officer Jardis was harassed for his beliefs on the war on drugs? Concerns about the truth. Okay, thank you. Are you on the board of selectmen, sir? Are you on the board of selectmen? Uh, do you have any concerns about the allegations that Officer Jardis was harassed over his beliefs? Uh, I haven't order? heard all the evidence, so I have no comments. All right, thank you much. I think the 23rd was the last thing I saw. This was everything. Are you on the board of selectmen, ma'am? I am. Do you, uh, are you guys receiving any kind of pressure from state or federal government to fire Brad Jardis? No, we're not. Okay, thank you. Chief Dodge, who's brought forward the uh, proposal to terminate Jardis. Two personnel matters involving police officer Bradley Jarvis. Number one, 
Office of Jardis was suspended without pay on August 5th, 2009 for six days and has appealed that decision to the Board of Selection through the union grievance process. Number two, Chief Dodge has sent a letter to the Board of Selection dated November 13th, 2009, in which he recommends that Office of Jardis be terminated for cause. As you know, the Board has the authority to remove police officers for cause under RSA 41 colon 48. We would normally handle these personnel matters in non-public session. However, in this case, Officer Jardis has requested that the hearing be in public. We will start by hearing from Lieutenant Mike Wallace and Chief Dodge. After they are done, the Board may have some questions for them. Then we will hear from Officer Jardis and his attorney and give them an opportunity to respond. So at this point, I'd like to say, Lieutenant Wallace, it's your turn first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, they'll hear it over the TV. Just okay. speak loudly and everybody should be able to hear you okay. Right. Thanks, Mayor. On July 20th, 2009, I received a written complaint from Sergeant Sean Gallagher reporting to me that Officer Bradley Jardis was in support of this, this stemmed from an incident occurring at McDonald's earlier that evening. On July 22nd, I initiated, initiated an internal investigation by providing Officer Jardis with a list of questions I wanted him to answer as he related to Sergeant Gallagher's complaint. On July 23rd, I received his written response. And then on July 24th, in the presence, in the presence of his union represent, representative, I interviewed Officer Jardis in my office. As a result of my investigation, I substantiated Sergeant Gallagher's original complaint and determined that Officer Jardis violated the following standard operating procedures and policies of the Epic Police Department, which you should have in front of you right now. The first one was conduct on becoming of an officer. The second one is conduct towards superiors and subordinates and carrying out orders. Based on my investigation, I recommended to Chief Dodge that Officer Jardis be suspended for three days. I made this recommendation to illustrate to Officer Jardis the seriousness of the violation because I considered his actions to be a serious breach of trust and his actions compromised the operational effectiveness of the department. And then, on July 29th, I received a written copy of an email from Sergeant Gallagher <coughs> that was originally written by Officer Jardis. Based on the email, I conducted another internal investigation. On July 30th, I interviewed Officer Jardis in my office in the presence of his union representative, Officer Ray Floyd. As a result of my investigation, I determined Officer Jardis violated um, standard operating procedures as set forth by the Epic Police Department. And again, you should have those in front of you. They were conduct on becoming of an officer, conduct towards superiors and subordinates, and <clears throat> furthermore, based on Officer Jardis' actions, I recommended a three-day suspension, again to illustrate to him the seri seriousness of the violation and because his conduct had a detrimental effect on the day-to-day -day operation of the department by creating internal conflict. Now, those internal investigations should be before you right now, as well as the uh, policy violations and the uh, policies, and they are. Now, uh, Attorney Pettis, we're going to handle this completely separate. That, or, I, I know it's kind of hard to distinguish. I, I think they kind of overlap, but I, if it's okay with everybody, I'd like to handle it one at a time and then go from there and then just start the process again, if that's okay. That's fine. Okay. I don't know. It is said, or certainly could be said, hell hath no fury like a well-intentioned government. Well, I don't know how good the intentions are over here, but I can tell you that the folks at the State House in Concord, New Hampshire, are not interested in protecting your freedom for the most part. They're taking it away, piece by piece. Fortunately, unlike in most states, they're not doing it without a fight. That is in large part due to the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance at nhliberty.org. Now, if you were to go into the State House there behind me and do this, you would hit one of the members of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance because they're in there all over the place fighting for your freedom. They also offer free training if you want to learn the ways of the Citizen Freedom Lobby. Visit them at nhliberty.org. <laughs> 